all right uh, now let's talk about IAM roles so IAM roles are a way to grant temporary permissions to access AWS resources to trusted users or services IAM roles enable you to define a set of permissions that determine what actions a user or service can perform on specific AWS resources. Here are some of the key points that I've identified for your IAM roles. Okay, so creating an IAM role. I, anyway, I'm going to show that in the AWS management console. Wait for that. Okay, so you can see what is important here. You can create an IAM role by logging into management console or you can also do that by using AWS CLI and other SDKs. So for example, Boto3 scripts, right? Now let me jump on to my AWS management console. This is my console here. And in my identity and access management, under the left hand side, you can see something called as roles under users. We talked about users, we talked about user groups. Now it's time to explore roles. Let me click on roles here. I have quite a lot of roles that are already created in my AWS account. If you see here, I have around 16 roles created. Okay, so here if you see here, an IAM role is an identity you can create that has specific permissions which with credentials that are valid for short durations. So these, uh, if you grant an IAM role, uh, so that if you create an IAM role, you will have access for a very short duration. Whereas users will have, you know, set of long duration of access. Okay. But roles, the access would be for only short duration. Okay. Now let's go ahead and how, explore how to create a role. To do that, let me click on create role. After clicking on create role, it will take you to the page where you need to provide the details. So what are the trusted entities that you are using here? Whether you are using the SAML, uh, AWS supports SAML 2.0 federation, are you using it for another AWS account or web identity or custom trust policy or whether it is an AWS service itself? Let's say AWS EC2 instance wants to access your S3 on behalf of you. So what you can do is you can select or you can create a role for your EC2 instance providing the permissions to your S3 bucket, right? So that you can do it here. Okay. Now let me select AWS service and then that I'll select EC2. Okay. So I'll click on EC2. Um, and next, if you click on next here, if you, there are multiple services that AWS offers. If you want to create for others, you can do that. Right. If you want to create your own policy and attach it, that also you can do it. If you click on create policy here, it will take you to the new page and you can create a fine grain policy for your AWS EC2 or else you can go ahead and add a policy that is already there. For example, I'll, I'll just say AWS EC2 S3 access, which was created by me a long time back. OK, so basically what let's see what is this policy is doing. Okay, I will be talking about these policies and how to create them later, but just un understand what are the you know policies that we are getting. So basically I'm giving S3 full access to this particular bucket. So this there was a bucket that I created. So basically I'm giving the entire S3 access to this particular AWS S3 bucket. Okay, so that is what it is doing. I'll select the same thing and I'll click on next. And obviously at the end, you will just have to click on create. That's all right. You just need to give a name here, provide a meaningful name and the it is uh, applying for AWS EC2. If you see here the principle under that you have service and it is ec2.amazonaws.com, right? If it is a Lambda function, it will be uh, lambda.amazonaws.com like that. It will be different for different trusted entities at the end. After selecting all these things, you can just click on create role. So the role will be created and you can attach this role to your EC2 instance so that it can access that particular S3 bucket, right? So I'm not going to do that. I'm just sh sh explaining you or showing you how you can do that. Okay. Let me go back to my documentation. Next, 
I am a role trust policy. We we saw this in the console, right? Now it will be more clear for us to understand after looking at the console. An I am role must have a trust policy that specifies the trusted NTC entities that are allowed to assume the role. For example, in our case, it was AWS EC2. So that was our trusted ent entity, right? The trusted policy determines who can assume the role under what conditions basically in our case it was ec2 so under what condition it was uh, you know assuming only when it tries to uh, uh, you know access that particular as, uh, s3 bucket that i mentioned right so next i am role access to access aws resources using i am role a user or service must first assume that role for example if i want to access anything I want to first assume that role myself and then I would be able to access it in the same way. Now we are attaching that I am role that I showed you to an EC2 instance. So what needs to happen is that EC2 instance first needs to assume that role and only then it will be able to access the S3 bucket. So this is done by requesting temporary security credentials from the AWS security token service or STS. Okay, once the user or service has assumed the role, they can access the resources and perform actions allowed by the roles permission. So whatever the role permission we have, it would be able to do that. An AC2 instance in our case has got access through S3 full access for that particular bucket only. So that EC2 instance will be able to access that particular S3 bucket. Okay, so now what are the best uh, practices for your IAM role? So the best practices for IAM role uh, include defining roles that are based on job functions or business purposes, using policies that grant a least privilege access and regularly reviewing and updating role permissions. Right. So if in case you have granted full access in the beginning, just to understand what at all, uh, what and all resources it is using later on, if you think that delete is not required for that role, you can go ahead and, you know, modify that role. So that is one of the best practice by using IAM roles. You can grant temporary permissions to access AWS resources to trusted users or services. IAM roles provide a granular and secure way to control access to your AWS resources and they can be used in combination with IAM policies and groups to manage access at scale. IAM roles are commonly used in used with services like EC2 instances, Lambda functions and S3 buckets to provide secure access to AWS resources. Okay, each role can have up to 10 policies attached. Okay, a, re a single role can have at least 10 policies attached. So you can, you know, have up to 10 policies for each role. So the maximum you can create, the maximum roles that you can create in an AWS account would be 1000, right? So you can create 1000 roles in an AWS account. Next, in the next uh, video, we are going to talk about AWS policies so what are policies how to create them and we'll also see what is the policy structure which is very important going forward as a cloud engineer okay